Supreme Team Fam, Jay of Jay Sinister here. Gotta give you an update to the Element Enduro Trail Runner 4x4. This is part 1A of the series because we're not really gonna get into any of the upgrades and installs yet. I just wanted to let you know about what's going on with this piece down here at the bottom. So, without further ado and enough chit chatting, cue up that intro footage. All right, team, we're back. I wanted to give you a quick update on what's uh, transpired since the last time I recorded this video on the uh, Element Enduro Trail Runner here. As you remember from the previous video, I'll link that up up top so you can see that. I had a small issue with this bumper valence on the back of the Trail Runner body, and I had assumed that the holes were drilled just too large for these to press fit into the body. But as I was doing the video, I did not notice that there was something missing that does show on the other pieces. So let me pull the body off and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And then I'll also tell you what I did with uh, Team Associated to try to get this rectified. Stay tuned. As you can see, I've pulled the body off. I'm trying to give you a shot of the inside. But if you take a look at all the other parts, let's take a look at the fender flare here. You'll notice that on each of the connection points, whoops, I always get this confused, there we go. Each of the connection points, I'm losing focus, you'll see there's a little black plastic disc. And this is how you fasten each one of these pieces to the body. And it's real simple. The disc, let me pull one off. This is gonna be really out of focus and I apologize, but I'll pop it off just so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, I've got the piece off. And I've got it right on the tweezer here. Let's get that into focus. See that little black disc right here? That is what is used to fasten each one of these pieces to the actual body of the trail runner. So, on the bumper valence, and by the way, this is part number, part of the parts tree for part number 42243. And this is called the trail runner valence. And let me refocus again. Right in here, you see that little nub sticking out. Let's turn that, there we go. See that little nub right here sticking out? That's what goes into the hole on the back of the body. And then that little plastic disc here, I'll fasten it to it. And this plastic disc right here that goes on the inside of the body, which tightens and fastens the piece to the body. There are only two of these for this valence. There we go. And those are missing in the box. I did check the box thoroughly. The part was already off of the body, so I know it was missing in manufacturing or packaging. So I went ahead and got online with Team Associated and I sent them an email describing what I was missing. Within a day, or the next day, next morning, which was this morning, I received a reply back from them stating, uh, providing me with a link to request an RMA for the, uh, actually a warranty service request, and all they needed from me was a copy of the original sales receipt, which I, you know, I do have, I just bought this recently, so I had a copy of that still. A uh, description of what the problem I'm having and photos, if I can, of where the problem or the part is that's missing. I sent that in to them this morning and I'm just waiting to hear back from them. I know it's a small thing, very small, minuscule thing, but once you pay for an item, I believe you should get everything that's supposed to come with it. And if these two in pieces are in fact part of this build, and it is because it states so on in the owner's manual, it's on page 16, and right up here, part 42243, which is all the parts on that tree, there are two, it shows two little nubs, two little plastic discs here, there, and there, that attach this rear valence to the body. So it even shows it in the owner's manual and that's something you should have. So we're just waiting for them to get back. Hopefully they'll honor this. It's brand new. I've never even taken it out and lost these pieces. I can understand if I need to buy some more. And if it's, you know, if I need to purchase them, I'll buy them, but I shouldn't have to. 
Thing number two about this that I did not discuss on the initial video is if you look on page 17, and this will lead me into another item, which I'm doing an upgrade, which I haven't done yet, which I've kind of had to pause. Page 17 talks about the front, get off that, come on, let's focus in. It's gonna be hard to get that to focus, and I apologize. But on page 17, and what I'll do is I'll just overlay a photo of this as I'm talking about it. This is the, uh, for the body build, this is the optional bumper setups. You have three setups for the front bumper on the Trail Runner. The first one is the standard setup, and that is just as how the bumper is shown on the body. Just as it is, bam, you're done. Option two is where you take the center plastic body, excuse me, center plastic bumper, and keep the polycarbonate sides. So what you're gonna to have to do is, and you can see where these dotted lines are, you have to physically trim these pieces out so that you can have the option two, which is just gonna be the center plastic bumper and the polycarbonate sides, which the polycarbonate is you're keeping the body sides and adding part number 42243 trail runner bumper center to the setup. The third option is the full plastic bumper, and that's where you remove the polycarbonate bumper from the body, which is simple to do. There's only four removal portions. Remove that out and then you stick parts 42244, trail runner bumper right and left, and the trail runner bumper center to the frame, and now you have a full off-road look. And how that's going to end up looking is depicted here on page 18, and again, I'll go ahead and just put a, a photo up. You have your three options of how it's going to look. One with the plastic polycarbonate left and right side bumpers and the full plastic center bumper. You have the full plastic bumper removal of the polycarbonate body bumper or you can just leave it as is stock. So I just wanted to point that out to you and talk about that a little bit. And also that brings me to another portion that I want to talk about. Let me reset the vehicle up, turn it around, and then we'll talk about one of the upgrades I'm going to do and what I've decided to do to kind of make this simpler for me. Stay tuned. All right, after a little repositioning, we're going to focus on this front piece right here. So the other day I showed you some 3D printed parts that I was going to do uh, to upgrade, do to upgrade this vehicle. And one of those is this front TRD style bumper. Well, in order to put this on, you have to do some trimming and cutting. So what this is what would have to happen. Number one, you're gonna remove this rear polycarbonate bumper piece, which again is only attached with four different fasteners, which we showed before, remove that. And then you have to cut, essentially, where you have the front headlights here, the front grill portion of the bumper, and the, you know, the, the other side of the other headlights, you have to cut and trim all around this area, where I'm showing here, in order for this to fit in. And then this has a little ridge here. This is gonna fit up under what's left on the polycarbonate body. And this is where you do your attaching of this bumper to the polycarbonate body. And when you're doing that, you have to remove these headlamp stickers, then somehow figure out how to remove the paint behind the polycarbonate shell so this is now clear, and that will fit, clear piece should fit down and over each one of these headlight buckets to form a realistic looking headlamp to which you'll put in some LEDs later. So in order to do that, I would have to chop up this body. Well, this is what I decided. I'm not sure I really want to chop this body up and remove the paint, which I know we can remove the paint. That's probably a little tedious and time consuming, but in order to get everything nice and neat, I would have to really take my time and be precise. And if I made a mistake, it's a wrap. So here's what I did instead. I went online and found, I believe at RC Planet, I was able to find the clear body shell for this trail runner. Not many individuals have this in stock. So I found it, ordered it, 
wondering if they just they just have it out there in stock and then once you do the order you get that email a day or two later saying oh we're sorry it's back ordered well that's not the case that same day oh excuse me the next morning I received a shipment notice and it should arrive here on Friday so I'm going to get a clear body shell coming in this week so that I can do the chopping on that it'll be nice and clear I'll be able to see my lines better the stickers won't be here and again it's clear no paint and I'll be able to fit and make this up better to the clear body shell and then I've already chosen the paint color I was going to if I was going to chop this up I was going to go ahead and keep it all white body match paint uh, this paint match this to the body I've chosen a different color I'll keep that a secret until the project for the upgrades of these 3D printed parts is done and you'll see. So that is the road that we're going to take in order to change this up. I also had to purchase these parts like the windshield wipers, door handles, and fender. Well, I didn't need the fenders, the rock sliders, so on and so forth separately so that I can have a realistic looking trail truck with these updated uh, upgrades, I should say, upgraded 3D printed parts to replace the front bumper and headlamps, the rear head tail lights, the rear spoiler, and a few, and the luggage rack on top to give it a overland look. That's coming soon. But the whole premise of this video was to give you an update on that rear bumper valence and why those two pieces were missing and what I'm doing to get that rectified, and also to let you know that if you want to do an upgrade such as this, and when I get to the point of where I am installing this onto the vehicle, I'll let you know where I got it from. And again, like I said in the previous video, your two options for purchasing these items, either buy it already printed and shipped to you and all you have to do is paint, or you buy it in a uh, buy the files and print them yourself and I'll show you the cost difference then. But fam, that is it. Thanks again for sticking around to the end. Quick shot video to give you an update on this Element Enduro 4x4 Trail Runner. I have also decided, you know, I love these stock tires and rims. They look good. I don't think I'm going to do an upgrade and boost these up to maybe 1.9s. I like these 1.55s. I like the stock rim. If I find a wheel that I like better than this where I can keep this same uh, 246 lug pattern and the center cap, I may have to do some updates to the um, to the uh, where the, the attachment point where the wheel and the suspension uh, attached attached to the hubs. I'll do that. But for now, these tires are great. They look good stock. There's no need to go too overboard with this vehicle. I've done that with other ones. The only thing I'm really changing uh, is the electronics. And again, that's where I put in this Spectrum uh, SR515 channel surface receiver. Thanks again, fam. Appreciate you staying to the end. Like, share, and subscribe really helps the channel grow. We've seen some rapid growth recently. We're still small, but we've boosted up our numbers. Thanks to all y'all for helping us do that. Check the description box below for how you can help this channel grow. And again, subscribe to this channel. Like and share with your friends. I am Jay of Jay Sinister Productions, exiting stage left. Jason is the production.